best 5 CPU 2023, are offered in a wide variety, each with unique features, benefits, and prices. I did a massive amount of research, reviewed a ton of reviews, and put up a list of the best 5 CPU from trustworthy brands to assist you in making a decision. After extensive investigation, I discovered these goods to benefit people like you. If you are curious to learn more about the price and other information, be sure read my description. Without further ado let's watch the video. Number 1. Intel Core i5 The 13th Gen Core Raptor Lake series brings with it generational CPU core count increases, and the same holds true even for the Core i5 to 13600K. The chip gets 6 performance cores, or P cores, and 8 efficient cores, E cores. This 6P plus 8E configuration is higher than the 6P plus 4E one of the previous generation i5 to 12600K older lake. And while it might seem insignificant, given that only the E-core count has increased, Intel also replaced the P-cores with the new Raptor Cove, ones that come with higher IPC, larger caches, and faster clock speeds. The 13th Gen Core Raptor Lake is Intel's second rodeo with the hybrid architecture. The 12th Gen Core helped it shore up CPU core counts and chase down AMD's lead in that area, and Intel is smart about it. The silicon only has 6 or 8 P cores, which Intel working on compute-intensive less parallelized tasks, while a swarm of physically smaller E cores, handles most light to moderate workloads, and in a crunch situation, all cores loaded can contribute greatly to the processor's overall multi-threaded performance. So AMD's advantage with gaming performance is overcome with the high clock speed P cores, and its advantage with multi-threaded creator workloads is dusted by E cores working in concert with the P cores. With Raptor Lake, Intel is introducing new Raptor Cove P cores that come with higher IPC, single-threaded performance at a given clock speed the ability to sustain higher clock speeds generationally, and higher amounts of dedicated 2 lira cache increased to 2 MB, compared to 1.25 MB on the Golden Cove cores of Alder Lake. While the E-cores are the same Gracemont ones, the E-core counts have increased generationally, as did their clock speeds and 2 lira cache sizes. Buster now shares 4 MB of 2 lira caches among the cores, compared to 2 MB on Alder Lake. The Core i5 to 13600K has two such clusters, and hence 80 cores. The shared 3 lira cache size has increased too, which is now 24 MB, compared to 20 MB on the i5 to 12600K. The 13th Gen Core Raptor Lake processors are built on the same socket LG A1700 package as the 12th Gen, and are compatible with existing Intel 600 series chipset motherboards via BIOS updates. Although they are accompanied by the 700 series chipset motherboards with improved power architecture, and downstream Psi connectivity. The new processors support the same I.O. as the 12th gen, with PCI Express 5.0 x 16 peg, one PCI Express 4.0 x 4 NVMe slot wired to the processor x8 chipset bus. The processors support both DDR4 and DDR5 memory types, improving choice for the consumer. Number 2. Intel Core i7 to 12700KF. Even though these new P cores runs at similar clock speeds as the 11th gen ones, yet, the newer ones give an average of 19% improvement when running at the same frequency against the Cypress core architecture. However, it's true that Alder Lake S desktop CPUs are very power-hungry and needs proper cooling, especially these overclockable K-series chips. 12 cores and 20 threads, efficient core base frequency, 2.70 GHz, and 3.80 GHz boost. Intel Core i7 3.60 GHz processor, offers more cache space, and the hyper-threading architecture delivers high performance for demanding applications, with better onboard graphics, and faster turbo boost. The socket LG A1700 socket, allows processor to be placed on the PCB without soldering. 11 MB 2 Lira and 25 MB 3 Lira cache E2 Lira and 25 MB 3 Lira cache, 
offers supreme performance for computation-intensive apps. 10NM Design offers great efficiency for computing, delivers nimble processing with balanced cost performance and power. Base TDP, 125 watts and max TDP, 190 watts DDR5 RAM support up to 128 GB and max memory bandwidth of 76.8 GB per second. As you see in the benchmarks graphs, the Intel Core i7 to 12700KF comfortably beats or nears the performance of the Ryzen 9 5900X in multi-core, while sometimes even competing against the more powerful Ryzen 9 5950X. In single-core performance, there's no competition at all. As the Core i7 to 12700KF is very fast, inches behind the Core i9 to 12900K. All of these scores are even 12900K. All of these scores are even without overclocking this beast. So you can imagine if you can fiddle with this chip carefully, you can get insane performance. The best part is the price to performance ratio. This Core i7 to 12700KF is an incredibly powerful yet affordable processor. Now with RS.35K pricing in India, undoubtedly could be your next productivity monster. Gaming coming to gaming, the strong single core performance already gave us a hint that this core i7 to 12700KF will perform really well in gaming, and it did so. What actually surprised me the most this CPU which costs almost 60% cheaper than the current core i9 to 12900K simply offers more value to gamers. It is amazing to see this tiny beast giving a similar performance as its flagship brother, and in all games, it easily gives you 60 plus FPS with the RX 69 gives you 60 plus FPS with the RX 6900 XT without any hiccups. Here are some of the gaming benchmarks in modern games at different resolutions and settings. And settings. Number 3. Intel Core i9 to 13900K desktop. The Raptors are here. We're reviewing the Intel Core i9 to 13900K, which leads the company's new 13th gen core. Raptor Lake desktop processor series. This gains significance as it is the company's final generation of processors built on a monolithic die with a uniform silicon fabrication node, with the CPU cores, IGBU caches, and platform controllers sitting on a single die. With future generations, Intel is expected to put its IDM 2.0 product development strategy into motion and we'll see processors made from multi-chip modules, MCMs. The Intel Core i9 to 13900K in this review doubles down on the hybrid architecture, which dealt a blow to AMD's leadership in the segment with the 12th Gen Alder Lake. The idea behind hybrid is not to chase down AMD's lead with CPU core counts at the 8th through 11th generations, but to place two distinct kinds of CPU cores, with different performance and power bands. The larger performance cores, or P cores, handle the most demanding workloads, and Intel calculates that eight of these should suffice, as even workloads such as games don't need more than 16 threads from performance cores, while a Zerg swarm of physically smaller efficient cores, or E cores, with reasonably high IPC could help the processor overcome the multi-threaded performance deficit to AMD processors and creator tasks. The E-cores also give the processor a low power footprint in everyday workloads. With the 13th gen Raptor Lake desktop processors, Intel is increasing core counts generationally, but only with the E-core counts. The number of P-core remains the same. Although Intel has updated the P cores themselves with higher IPC, the 13th gen Core i9 SCUS, such as the i9 to 13000 in this review, come with 8P cores and 16E cores, 8P plus 16E, an increase from the 8P plus 8E configuration of the previous Gen i9 to 12900K. The 13th Gen Core i7 chips, such as the i7 to 13700K, will have an 8P plus 8E loadout, an uplift from the 8P plus 4E one of the i7 to 12700K and matching that of the i9 to 12900K. The Core i5K series gets an upgrade too, which is now 6P plus 8E, compared to 6P plus 4E of the previous generation. The Raptor Lake Silicon feature 8 Raptor Cove performance cores that offer higher IPC, 
as well as operate at significantly higher clock speeds than the Golden Cove cores on Alder Lake. The dedicated two lira caches of these cores have been enlarged in size to 2 MB, compared to 1.25 MB of the previous cores are unchanged in architecture from the previous generation, although Intel has enlarged their two lira caches from 2 MB per 4 core cluster to 4 MB and increased their clock speeds. The 3 lira cache shared between P cores and E core clusters has been generationally enlarged across the board, it's 36 MB on the core i9 chips 30 MB on core i7 and 24 MB for the core i5K series. The new 13th gen core desktop processors share the same socket LGA1700 package as the 12th gen Alder Lake and are compatible with Intel 600 series chipset motherboards with BIOS updates. Although they launch alongside improved 700 series chipset boards, which also let you use older 12th gen processors with them. The new processors also offer platform flexibility with support for older DDR4 memory in addition to DDR5, and the piece for the processors is unchanged 16th side gen 5 lanes for the graphics card, an M2 gen 4 slot for CPU attached NVMe SSD and DMI 4.0x8 chipset bus. You will come across 700 series chipset motherboards with Gen 5 NVMe slots, but these slots cut into the X16 peg lanes, meant for the graphics card, making it run at X8 bandwidth, while the Gen 5 M2 slot is number 4. AMD Ryzen 9 5900X 12 core Ryzen 9 5950X has landed in our labs, boasting 16 cores and 32 threads, bristling with the potent new Zen 3 microarchitecture. AMD's new Halo part expands Ryzen 9's dominating lead in productivity applications and beats Intel's competing processors in every other metric including 1080p gaming performance, by surprising margins. Our 5950X sample even breaks the 5GHZ barrier at stock settings, at least sporadically, outstripping its spec and making it an easy choice for our list of best CPUs, all while radically altering our CPU benchmarks hierarchy. Much of Risen's early success stemmed from industry-leading core counts and plenty of freebies for enthusiasts, like bundled coolers and unrestricted overclockability, paired with broad compatibility. Still AMD was long re Risen 5000 changes the game entirely, though, the chips come with the same refined 7nm process found in the Risen XT processors, but AMD paired the node with a ground-up redesign of the Zen Core microarchitecture. AMD says the new Zen 3 microarchitecture provides a 19% average increase in instruction per cycle IPC, throughput, erasing the last vestiges of Intel's performance advantages while delivering a new level of power efficiency. According to our tests, the Ryzen 5000 processors deliver, beating Intel in nearly all metrics that matter, including performance, power consumption, and thermals, and largely remove Intel's performance lead after overclocking. And yes, that includes in 1080p gaming. AMD is also leveraging its position as the only CPU maker that also makes discrete GPUs by rolling out its new smart memory access feature. This new tech boosts game performance between the CPU and GPU, but it only works if you have a Radeon RX 6000 graphics card, Ryzen 5000 processor, and a 500 series motherboard. We won't know the full implications of this new tech until the Radeon RX 6000 Big Navi launch later this month, but it Number 5. AMD Ryzen 9 7950X 16 core. AMD Zen 4 is here, and the new Ryzen 9 7950X 16 core processor in this review is out to restore the company's top spot in the PC processor industry. With Zen 4, the company is firmly into the next generation era, with the latest high IPC CPU cores, supporting new instruction sets for future applications, and support for the latest iOS standards, 
such as DDR5 and PCI Express 5.0. The Ryzen 7950X targets both enthusiast gamers, professional game streamers, as well as overclockers. This is a classic multi-core processor, and all 16 of its CPU cores are what Intel would consider performance cores. With this generation, AMD is making integrated graphics standard, so even businesses and academic scientific customers who need the compute X cards can look for Ryzen 7000 series processors. While the IGBU isn't gaming grade, it's intended to be as capable if not more, than the one competing Intel processors ship with. The new Zen 4 architecture introduces a generational 13% IPC uplift, which when combined with the high boost frequencies afforded by the new 5NM process, work out a single thread uplift of 29%. The company claims that not only do these processors nullify the gaming performance advantage of Intel processors, but also dominate in productivity tasks where the 16P cores offer up to 44% more multi-threaded performance than the previous Gen 5950X, which already enjoyed a slight performance lead over the i9 to 12900K Alder Lake, with creator workloads that scaled across cores. The Zen 4 core comes with double the 2 lira cache size, now at 1 MB while the 3 lira processor totals to 64 MB, boosting the creator credentials of the Ryzen 9 7950X is its platform IOA. AMD's PCI Express Gen 5 implementation goes a step ahead of Intel's. You get Gen 5 not just for the X16 peg slot, but two additional X4 connections, besides the chipset bus. It's possible for motherboard designers to wire out two Gen 5 M2 Me slots attached to the CPU, without eating into the X16 peg bandwidth. The Ryzen 7000 series exclusively supports DDR5 memory, which means no backwards compatibility with DDR4. New generation connectivity is why the company had to develop socket AM5. AM5 is a new LGA socket, much like Intel's desktop sockets for the past couple of decades. It wires out DDR5 memory, 28 lanes of Psi Gen 5, Platform IOA that includes USB 3.2 ports, modern display connectors, such as DP 2.0, and most importantly, comes with a smarter, more capable power architecture. The socket enables two-way communication between the processor and voltage regulators, and supports up to 230 watts power delivery. AMD has given the 7950X and its sibling, the 7900X 12 core a massive 170 watts TDP with 230 watts PPT. The company recommends a 240 mm or 280 mm AIO liquid CPU cooler to go with these chips. Air cooling won't cut it. The good news here is that AM5 maintains cooler compatibility with AM4, so you're spoiled for choice with AM4 compatible liquid coolers. The Ryzen 9 7950X comes with the highest clock speeds in the series, with a base frequency of 4.5 massive 5.70 GHz boost frequency, with all core boost frequency spread above the 5 GHz mark under acceptable cooling conditions. These processors are designed to run hot, and AMD claims that temperatures around the 95 degrees centigrade mark is considered normal.